never held my hand out and asked for something free. I got pride I could roll out for miles in front of me. On the 24th of May 2019, I was diagnosed with what turned out to be stage 3 rectal cancer. We didn't know at the beginning of it how long the treatment would take or what it would involve and I foolishly thought I'd be back on my feet in a matter of two or three months. That turned out to be not quite true. So I started with some radiotherapy and then on the 10th of July I had major surgery and I was fitted with an ileostomy bag. Um, that was a bit of a shock to the system to say the least but I soon got used to it and then followed another 18 months of, of treatment and infections and ups and downs. I had a very nasty post-op infection that summer of 2019 which delayed the start of chemotherapy. But once I did start, I had 11 chemotherapy sessions which knocked me off my feet, I think it would be fair to say. And then at the end of that, um, after a small bout of sepsis, I was left to recover for a few months before I had the reversal op to get rid of the ileostomy bag. At that point I think it would be fair to say that I was physically very depleted and mentally not at my strongest point. And that is where Macmillan came into the equation. All I'd seen of Mac Macmillan up to that point was lots of leaflets in the hospital about the effects of cancer and how to eat properly and how important exercise um, had been. But I'd ignored most of that and spent the previous 18 months doing very little exercise and eating donuts because I felt a bit sorry for myself and I thought I deserved it. Um, so there I was after the op, barely able to walk. I had to be supported to walk up the stairs at home. My diet was shocking. I'd put on a huge amount of weight because of the donuts and the steroids that I'd been on for seven months. And I was feeling a bit sorry for myself and I thought Macmillan aren't going to be able to help me out of this hole. But they were very persistent and they phoned three or four times until eventually I said, oh, go on then, I'll give it a go. And um, my first contact with them was speaking to the nutritionist and she was absolutely amazing and she gave me real depth support about how to get my diet back on track, which sadly included fewer donuts. And then I needed some physiotherapy because, uh, as I said, I couldn't walk up the stairs unaided and there were some very comical moments with me falling down the stairs when I was first discharged from hospital because I thought my feet were on the stairs and they weren't. And then it came to getting my fitness back on board and I had an amazing personal trainer uh, who supported me with that. And very quickly, in a matter of two or three months, I went from a very poor diet to a much more healthy diet. And from not being able to get up a curb when I went for a walk, I had to be helped to get up a, a, a low curb to being able to um, walk up the stairs unaided, which was a huge thrill and not fall down the stairs constantly, which was even better and saved me being bruised quite a lot. It made me feel that getting back on my feet again was possible. And I'm eternally grateful to the team at Macmillan because not only did they help me with practical advice, they were always there at the end of the phone. If I had a bit of a wobble and I thought I can't do it, I could phone them or I could email them and they would speak to me or they'd send through fact sheets illustrating exercise, exercises I could do. And they were just really kind and really thoughtful. And when you finish your clinical treatment, it can feel very lonely and it does feel like you're on your own a little bit. And the Macmillan team filled that gap for me. They gave me continuity of support. I'm back teaching Zumba again which is brilliant, so I, I really missed it when I couldn't teach Zumba and I had amazing colleagues in Rosie and Harriet who kept the classes going for me whilst I was having my treatment. And I, I just felt, I'm back, I, I can do this. And I did end up on my backside on the playground, but they helped me back up again. And we carried on as if nothing had happened. And since then I've just gone from strength to strength. Thanks obviously to the clinical team, but also to the team at Macmillan. I feel like I'm Joe again, and that makes a huge difference to the way in which I can enjoy my life. 
uh, the way I spend time with family and friends. I can get back to doing the things that I love. I can get back to socialising, Zumba, eating out, spending time with the, with the kids, embarrassing them in public, which is my very favourite thing to do. Uh, going for walks with friends, all of those sorts of things that I thought were so far away. And Macmillan gave me the confidence to realise that I could get it all back and that it could be even better than it was before. One of the reasons that we're doing this concert is because cancer touches the lives of so many people. I come into contact with so many friends and family and Zumba participants who've had their own experience of cancer and have benefited from Macmillan as well and they're all really supportive of tonight and uh, supporting me in my training towards the half marathon that I'm doing on the 28th of May and it will be four years and four days past my diagnosis and I want to raise £4,000 for Macmillan and the girls who come to Zumba have just been amazingly supportive. I say to them at the start of class, come on, I've only got 12 weeks to go or I've only got 11 weeks to go. We're going to have to work really hard in class today. And bless them, they do. Two years ago when I first started dealing with Macmillan, I didn't think I could. Or 18 months ago when I first had that first Zumba class back after treatment, I didn't think I'd be here planning to run a half marathon and have several cocktails at the end of it. Um, so I'm very grateful to everybody for the amazing donations that we've had for the raffle and the auction and for all the hard work that's gone into pulling the concert together, particularly Dennis and Tony who've been really supportive and like my knights in shining armour saying that they want to help me towards my fundraising target. Uh, it means such a lot to me. It does make a huge difference. It does enable Macmillan to carry on with the amazing work that they do and it means a lot to me and I know it'll mean a lot to a lot of people in the audience uh, whose lives have been touched by cancer as well. It's really weird how you do get a different perspective when you've been poorly. Sitting on my sofa at home with my fellow Bosier ladies, having a good old sing just lifts my spirits. I really, really enjoy that now and I, I think back to the times when they sat on the end of my bed when I was poorly and I couldn't get up and tried to get me to eat things and uh, would stay overnight with me if Simon needed to be away for work or with the children or whatever. Uh, going on uh, flower arranging courses at Hope Farm with Y Valley Flowers. I'm the least creative person that you could possibly meet but I did make a hand tied bouquet being able to go back into the primary school to read with the children, which I couldn't do for so long and have lots of fun with them. And we do Zumba and we read and we've done, uh, we've entered the Morven Garden competition and met Princess Anne there and just had amazing experiences with the children. I'm really, really appreciative of all of that now. You did it really, really well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really I could feel when I was talking about, oh, I can feel it now. When I was talking about the Beauge ladies. Yeah, yeah. Because they were amazing. I don't need you to tell me who to be. Can someone just hold me? Don't fix me. Don't try to change a thing.